one of the reasons for market failure is externalities. When we use the term external, then the externalities should be external to something. What is that something? That something is the demand and supply functions. So externalities arise when an economic agent takes certain action which affects either the utility or satisfaction levels of the household or the cost functions of the firms or the profits of the business organizations. Then the uh, uh, and, and that is not being incorporated into the demand and supply functions and therefore in the market price, then the externality would arise. Externality represent market failure because if we do not take those externalities into account, then the prices don't accurately reflect the scarcity value of the resources that are used. Externalities can be positive, they can be negative. If we have a polio campaign, for example, uh, uh, in order to uh, eliminate polio from, the, from, from India, uh, then the injections that are required for polio, these are going to have the impact on the society as a whole as well as it will benefit the individuals. So if we ask individuals to pay the full amount for the polio injections, then the, we, would have, we would not be able to take into account the positive externalities. Uh, so this is the reason why they get subsidized by the, by the state uh, in order to capture those positive externalities. There are also negative externalities. This may relate to noise. And we know that in India, for example, the decibel levels uh, is, is much higher than what may be appropriate for, for, uh, for good health. So anytime the, we have got unnecessary honking or unnecessary noise that is being made, it creates a negative externalities for for, for others. Negative externalities also arise through congestion, through dumping of the factory waste or a household waste on the on either on the river or in the street or elsewhere. Uh, and and these then tend to reduce the utility levels or increase the cost or or reduce profits of the others producers uh, uh, in, in, the, in the economy. So we have got both positive externalities and negative externalities. In each case, we are not achieving the Pareto efficient level of allocation of resources. So why we want to address externality is because we can improve the efficiency of resource allocation. What are the instruments government has? The instrument government has is taxes. Taxes in order to reduce the negative externality so that, for example, if a uh, tax is levied on the pollutants 
that are being discharged or the affluents which are being discharged by the factory, then that uh, would mean that the factory now has to take into account the, the uh, cost, uh, the tax cost which they will need to uh, uh, bear. The negative externalities then we can have taxes or externalities in general. We can use taxes, subsidies, fines and levies, regulation or in the event, in certain events we can ban some item all together. So uh, dangerous drugs or dangerous chemicals, others, they are uh, uh, banned uh, in the extreme, in the extreme cases. Each one of these have got cost and benefits uh, in utilization. The taxes would mean that the government will get the revenue but there will be impact on the rest of the society of those taxes and the subsidies would mean that those subsidies have to be financed. Those subsidies will have to be proportional to the positive externality. Often it is said that we must subsidize higher education because it has positive externality. This is not the correct logic because the subsidies in, for higher education must be in proportion to the positive externalities that the higher education in a particular discipline tends to create for the society. Externalities are pervasive but governments must resist the temptation to think that they can address those externalities every time they occur because the cost of intervention may exceed the benefits that are derived from addressing those externalities. It's also important to remember that zero externality is not an economically efficient option. The economically efficient option is that the marginal benefits of the addressing the externality is equal to the marginal cost and the marginal benefits go down as externalities become less and less and the marginal cost increase as externalities become less and less. As an example, if the air that we want is, uh, uh, we want the pollutants in the air to be reduced by uh, in such a way that the air is cleaned by 80%, then there will be certain marginal benefits and costs. But if you want to go from 80 to 95%, then the marginal cost will be quite high and the marginal benefit will be decreasing. So we need to have some estimation and not insist that the externalities should be reduced to zero. Sorry, it's a bit long.